Hey guys, this is Aaron. I want to take a look at a question that I've seen quite a few times on our forums, which is how do I draw a threaded screw or a threaded rod, a threaded thing, basically a spiral that you'd see on a screw. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it. There's actually quite a few extensions out there that automate this process, but I'm going to show you how to do it manually. And I'm going to do that using SketchUp Shop. So no extensions here, no funny business, just straight up native tools, drawn geometry. So I'm going to start by using the eraser key to uh, get rid of Josh. Sorry. Sorry, Josh. Bye-bye. And then I'm going to hop in here and I'm going to grab a circle. So first thing I want to take note of is how many sides I'm drawing. I'm drawing a 24-sided circle. That's important. The other thing that is important is I want to make sure to center this circle on the origin. And I'm going to pull it out. Um, I'm not going for a specific size right now. I'm just getting geometry. I would scale this down to the proper size after I've drawn. Uh, right now, I just need a big circle. So I'm going to come out here. I'm coming out about 9 feet or so and click. All right, there we go. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a line and I'm going to draw a line up. Again, kind of an arbitrary amount. We're, we're sculpting at this point. We're not actually drawing. So um, everything I do here is actually going to just kind of be look and feel. I'm not going to go for specific dimensions at this point. Um, so actually, before I create this line, I'm going to double click on this circle, right click and say make it a group. I want to isolate that geometry. Now I'm going to grab my line. I'm going to click on this point, drag a line up, and then diagonally back to one of these other segments right here. So that's all I'm looking for. In fact, I'm not even looking for that much. I'm actually only looking for this one. So this line right here is all I want right now. I'm going to take that line and I'm going to make a copy of it. I'm going to make a radial array, copy it around to every segment of the circle. I'm going to do that using the rotate command. Rotates over here nested under move. I'm going to click on the center point. This is one of the reasons I wanted to, to center on the origin. I'm going to click at the base of the point now and then I'm going to slide around to the next point. I'm going to make sure that I hit the modifier key. This is option or control depending on the operating system you're on. And that means I'm going to make a copy. So right down here, option e equals toggle copy. And I'm going to click there. Now, I don't want to do it just once. I want to actually type in to the lower right corner. I'm just going to type times 23. Like I said, it was, it's important to remember how many sides I have because this geometry is going to repeat. I said times 23 because this copy doesn't need to be, this piece doesn't need to be copied. That was the original. To get 24 total, it is uh, 23 copies. All right, that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I'm going to rotate to the side, orbit around to the side, and I'm going to do a group select across all the lines. When they're selected, I'm going to hit the move command. It's over here on the right, or if I, I can just hit the M key. And I'm going to click one of the endpoints on the bottom. I'm going to hit the modifier key again to copy, and copy it straight up to the line above. I'm going to do that X23 as well. So that's going to give me this big spirally looking thing. This is good. This is what I want right now. I'm going to triple click on one of these spirals. It does not matter which one at all. I'm going to pick the one that ends on the red just because, I don't know, there's some order that makes me feel good about myself. I don't know why. I'm going to double click on it. That's going to highlight the whole spiral. I'm going to right click and say make group. Now what I want to do is get rid of all lines that aren't in that group. So I'm going to select everything and I'm going to use my shift select key to turn off the circle and turn off that group. So now all I have is the rest of the lines and I can delete those. So all I want right now is that one spiral. So this will end up being uh, the thread of the screw. You can see it's pretty pretty big right now. It's a big wide thread. So first thing I'm going to do is select that group, just pick anywhere on that line, and use scale to kind of squash that down. Whoops. Squash that down, maybe right about there. All right, that looks good. Now I'm going to go into this group. I'm going to select that spiral I just created. Triple click again. M to move, option, and drag that straight up again. And I'm going to do that maybe nine more times. So hit X9 and enter, and that's going to give me that's the length of the threaded area of my screw. That looks all right. Now, you know, actually, I'm going to go a little longer, maybe. 
X13. Yeah, that looks a little better. If you don't actually hit any other keys or click, you can change the number of copies you make when you're doing an array, uh, radial or linear array like that, um, just by retyping X and the number you want. All right, that was good. So I'm going to go ahead and click outside of the group. I'm going to pick the group, and I am going to rotate it. Copy, rotate. I'm going to click there, Option. I'm going to spin that all the way around to the opposite side. So it's going to go on the red axis the other direction. Now I have two, looks like a DNA helix or something like that, two spirals going over each other. Everything's in a group now. This is really important. Circle's in a group. This line is in a group. This line is in a group. All right, what I'm going to do now is open up the circle group. I'm going to use push-pull to pull that up to the top. All right, so now, again, everything's still in group. Everything is separate. Now I'm going to start exploding stuff. What I'm going to do first is select the rod, the extruded circle, right-click, and explode. Now I'm going to select one of the spirals. doesn't matter which one. Right-click, right-click, and explode. Now I'm going to select the other spiral. See how that merged into the geometry? As soon as it leaves the group, it becomes one piece of geometry again. So. This spiral is still on the outside of that geometry, but this one has actually merged with the cylinder. So I'm going to grab this next piece, right click, explode, and notice when it first explodes, everything is still selected. This is very important. I do not want to deselect these lines. I don't want to click. I don't want to type anything. I want to make sure that that line is still selected. Manually going through and repicking all those lines would be painful. So it's real important that as soon as I explode, I go right to my next command, which is going to be scale. I'm going to hit S on the keyboard, brings up scale. And this is awesome. This is the cool part of this whole thing. I'm going to hold down the option key. Option is going to scale about the middle. And I'm going to grab one of these cor one of these sides. I'm going to grab the red one with option or control selected. And I'm going to move that in. I'm going to go in, say, maybe 70%. So 0.7 in the red scale down the lower right corner. And I do the same to the front. Grab the green, and again, with the modifier key selected, so I'm scaling about the middle, I'm going to drag that down to 70 as well. And it, it didn't snap right to 70, so I'm just going to type in 0 0.70 and hit Enter. And with that, look at that, no extensions, nothing funny, I have the first piece of my screw. At this point, I've created a threaded rod that can be used to actually create screw geometry. And all that was done in SketchUp Free with no extensions, uh, all native commands. So that's part one of creating a screw in SketchUp. You like this video, like the content we shared? Give us a like down below. Let us know what you like and you don't like in the comments so we can make more skill builders that address the issues that you wanna see. Thank you.